recording. Started. Yes. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalam. Ala Muhammadan wa alayhi wassalam. All praise is due to Allah, Rob, cherish, and sustainer of all the world. May peace and blessings be upon the noble messenger, his family, and companions. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulallah. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This week we're going to be talking about chapter seven. The seven tips on how to begin how to begin dialogue or how to start dialogue. Number one, what do you know or think about Islam? This is a question that you're going to ask somebody. Uh, these seven tips should be after, of course your introduction, where you introduce yourself, you talk about the things that are familiar or have something to do with your audience, and then you try to introduce your audience, ask them where they come from, what their name is, any kind of questions, just general questions, so that the two of you can get some kind of rapport, so that you can uh, talk to each other. When you start to talk and they don't know who you are, they kind of feel a little shy or a little timid, they don't want to join in. So it's good for you to give a, an introduction first. Then you go into what you know or think about Islam. Sometimes they may know a lot, sometimes they don't know a little. So you have to find out what they know first so that you don't waste two or three hours talking about a subject that they already know and they don't want to talk about. This question should be preceded by other general conversation. For example, ask how long the person has been in this country or wherever you are, if they have been in the country for a long time, this is a, su a suitable question. If they have only just arrived, another approach is required. For example, one could offer to show them around or invite them to a gathering such as a, a wedding, uh, a lunch. Maybe you can make up some kind of gathering and say, well, how about us go buy, us go have lunch or find out what kind of food he is. This is conversation that's going to make it easier and make him familiar with him. Show them around, take them to gatherings, take them to sports, just be friendly to them. You don't have to be friends with them, but be friendly towards them. Invite them to things that normally you would invite your friends to. Number two, <clears throat> talk about current issues. Uh, Whatever is going on at the time, what's going on now. Uh, recently we've had some bombings in the United States during a marathon. You could talk about this. Talk about how it was deplorable and it's something that shouldn't have happened. Or you could talk about world affairs or politics. It's not a good subject really. Most people's politics is different. But you could talk about money and jobs and are they going to school and, and current events, things that's going on now. If they're open-minded to see the obvious injustice in the hijab or ban of the Western invasion of Iraq uh, based on non-existent WMDs, then the conversation could be steered to the media distortion of Islam, etc. like this. If they didn't understand the issues behind the hijab or the invasion of Iraq, they should be enlightened briefly and these issues link to Islam, our point of view, what we think about it, not what's in the media necessarily. Number three, how do you feel about living in a Muslim country? Ask the person about how he feels living here, because most of the time when a new Muslim or non-Muslim comes, he feels strange. He feels left out. Everybody seems to be doing something that surrounds Islam. Um, maybe it's time for him to go eat lunch, and everybody's going to the mosque. He goes to the restaurant to get dinner, and they close the doors. So he's hungry, he has to stand there and wait for 45 minutes to an hour before he can eat lunch, and his lunch is already finished, his time is up. So you can talk about some of these things and try to make him feel more comfortable in his surroundings. He doesn't understand how all of a sudden he just starts hearing this loud noise, which we call the Adhan, and he doesn't know what it is. He doesn't understand Arabic, 
what are they saying over the microphones? Are they telling me to get out of the street? Or he has no idea what they're saying. So you should try to, uh, if nothing else, just translate the words for him. It's going to happen at this about this time every day, and you're not allowed to go to, to go shopping or, or these kind of things. You should inform him of these things, him or her, either one. Does discuss the differences between their country and being here as a means of clarifying misconceptions about Islam and Muslims. You might like to hear about his country. There's many countries that I haven't talked to people about that I would like to know about their countries. There's a lot of countries I would like to visit. When you talk to people about their home and where they live and how they come from, sometimes you find they're, they're not a lot different from the way we are. They live pretty much the same way. So it's kind of interesting for you and it's interesting for them. Find out their impressions of Muslims and correct the negative images. Most of the time you ask a non-Muslim about Muslims, he usually has a negative image of at least one or two people that he's met that he thinks are very bad people. And it's your, it's your time to be able to talk to him and say, look, this person doesn't represent him Islam. He's representing himself. Yes, he has a Muslim name and he is a Muslim, inshallah. But he doesn't represent Islam. Islam is this. He should try to clear up, clarify his misconceptions. If he sees this, he believes that all Muslims are the same. If he sees some Muslim in a bar drinking, he thinks all Muslims are the same. They say drinking is not allowed, it's haram, it's forbidden. If they see him doing it, they think it's the same as Christianity. Why would I want to go from my religion, which they doing that, to your religion and they're doing the same thing. So you can understand that if you don't tell him that no, not all Muslims are like that and that is forbidden and what the punishment for it is and why this person is doing it, he's never going to understand. Distinguish between what Muslims do and what they're supposed to do. Cultural Islam and Islamic culture. There's two different things. You should tell him how it should be, and yes, there are people in our religion just like his that are doing wrong. But alhamdulillah, if he chooses to do Islam correctly, he has the chance or the choice to go to heaven. If he does it wrong, then that's his choice, that's his option. It's not right. Number four, you might ask, what is impressions of Arabs if he's in this country? And how have they changed since coming here? How has his attitude changed towards them? What does he think about them? Some people are lucky. They get a real good image of Arabs in this region. They're lucky enough to meet a nice person who is kind and nice to them. Uh, they're lucky they don't meet one of these people that try to run them over in the streets. They don't meet people uh, like my wife's experience. She was, somebody came to talk to her and asked her what her religion was. She said, I'm a Christian. And she, he said, oh, well, why don't you become Muslim? And she said, no, thank you. And he started screaming, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. This had to be something that she carried with her for a long time. She didn't want to talk to another Muslim. So we have to be careful about this. I mean, if we find somebody like this, we have to, to straighten out these misconceptions. Number five, you could ask, are you a religious person? Yes, you said you're Christian, but when do you go to church? How many times? Uh, what do you know about the Bible? Uh, if they're uh, Hindu, how many times do you go to the temple? Uh, do you pray in the morning? Just find out about his religion or her religion. Find out the person's spiritual state. If they are re religiously committed, then ask them to define according to their scriptures not according to their personal opinions, the reason for their existence. Okay, you're a very uh, knowledgeable person and you seem to be very religious. So what is your purpose in life in accordance with your book, the Bible, the Torah, uh, the Hindu scriptures, whatever they are? You'd be lucky, if, first of all, if they could tell you, especially from the Christians. Most people have no answer. They just kind of look at you and I, I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Very few people have read the Bible. They never thought about it and the religious teachers and teachings don't spell it out clearly. Here the clarity of purpose mentioned in the scripture, 
Quran may impress them and encourage them to read the Quran. Otherwise, a discussion of purpose would be good. If he doesn't know what his purpose is, then this, this is a chance or opportunity for you to tell him what you believe based on the Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what our purpose in life is. You could say, our purpose in life is to worship Allah in the way that He wants. How do we find out the way He wants? Then we have to read the authentic books. The only one that we know is the Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So based on those two things, we should be praying, living our life as a good Muslim. That's our purpose of creation, is to worship Allah. Number six, if the person is wearing jewelry, such as a, a cross, you've probably seen them wearing a gold or a silver cross, you could ask them, why do you keep that idol? Why do you, why do you worship this cross? And if they're Catholic, you say, well, why do you cross yourself? What's the reason for this? And you can use some of these religious symbols to introduce Islam. These are contrasting ideas to what the person believes. The goal being to bring out the false ideas the person holds and to compare them with Islamic beliefs and scripture practices. Or you may use other people's question to begin discussion. If they ask about hijab, if it's a woman, or your Islamic cap or hat, or gown, such as your uh, thobe, use the question to clarify misconceptions or introduce them to some Islamic concepts. I know some people like to ask questions about the beads. You know, we have beads. There's 33, 33, 33, 33. It looks exactly like the beads of the Catholics. And the Chinese even have a set of beads that just look like it. So this may be a misconception to them. They may think you're doing the rosary, which is what it is if you're Catholic. You can explain to them what you're doing, what you're saying, why you do it, why you say it. Tell them, I don't need these beads. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told me to count my fingers, and it's much easier, and they're with me all the time. If I lose my beads, I can still count. <laughs> so these are subjects that you can bring up and talk to the people about. Don't just leave them with these ideas wandering around in their mind, or they'll be lost. Number seven. Discuss Islam in the presence of others. As I told you in probably in more than one class, that it's a, a good idea. For instance, if two Muslims have a conversation with each other, they can have this conversation and non-Muslims can be in the room. And this is part of indirect dialogue. The reason we do it is the... If I talk to a non-Muslim directly, he starts to feel self-conscious and like I'm pointing my finger at him. But if I'm talking to you, then he can listen without feeling like anybody's pointing at him or anybody's talking to him. Because if you ask me a question about Christianity and I say this, then I'm not talking about him. But if you ask me a question and I'm talking to him, then he feels like I'm pointing a finger at him. See, you're doing wrong, you're doing wrong, you're doing wrong. So we can do it indirectly, as I'm talking about here. If you're traveling with Muslims and sitting among non-Muslims, use the opportunity to discuss about basic Islamic beliefs for their benefit. Don't go into hadith, how hadith graded, and these kind of things. Just use basic issues. Especially if you're talking to a Muslim who was a non-Muslim before. Ask him about his beliefs and how he was before and all these kind of questions because these other people can't identify with that or associate with that. They may use that to base their knowledge of Islam on what the two of you said without anything direct. Or ask directly. One asks about the meaning of Surah Al-Fatah and the other explains it. You can talk about Surah Al-Fatah. Anything, any of the sort surahs from the Quran in which you could say it in Arabic and then translate it into English so that this person could hear. It may be enough to make him want to go and read the Quran some more. But I suggest if you're going to do these kind of things, you should at least carry a copy of the translation of the meaning of the Quran so that if this person asks, you can give him one. 
Okay, we're going on next to chapter 8. The title is More Than 80 Ideas of How to Make Dialogue. I don't know that we're going to finish this all today. 80 ideas is a lot. But uh, we'll try. All praises do to Allah, who expressed the highest praise for the caller to his religion, saying, And who is better in speech than one who calls to Allah? and works righteousness and says, Surely I am of the Muslims. Chapter 41, verse 33. And may Allah's peace and blessings be on the Prophet Muhammad, the role model who said, Whoever calls to guidance will have a reward similar to that of one who follows it. Muslims know that Allah is the one who honored them with the religion of Islam and made them responsible for fulfilling the trust of spreading it. Furthermore, they know that they will be asked about this responsibility on the judge, day of judgment, as Allah says. This is a reminder to you and your people, and you will be asked or questioned. Chapter 43, verse 44. They also know that if they fulfill the trust and become a reason for the guidance of others to Almighty Allah, they will receive a reward greater than they can possibly imagine. As the Almighty said, Say, let them rejoice in Allah's grace and mercy, for it is better than what they accumulate. Chapter 10, verse 58. Shaquille, could you turn down the air conditioning or turn it off? It's starting to get cold in here. <laughs> Thank you. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, For all for Allah to guide someone by your hand is better for you than anything this world contains. Uh, mashallah, today I was given a gift by Allah. I just came to the mosque to pray for Juma prayer and had just finished my Sunnah prayers and got up to walk into the mosque and there were some people there to talk about Islam. There was ten Filipinos, four of them were, and I guess it was nine of them, four of them were Muslims and five of them were non-Muslims. So they asked me, please explain about Islam to these non-Muslims. So the same speech I've been giving you here in the class, I talked to them about who I am, who they are, where they come from, I associated with them, I got friendly with them, we had a conversation, and then I asked them the same three questions that I ask every time. You believe in one God, you believe Jesus is a prophet of God, and you believe that Muhammad was a prophet of God. When they believe these three things, then we go on to talk about the five pillars of faith. Excuse me, five believe five pillars of, of Islam. They said, if you're willing to accept these, then we're willing to accept you as a Muslim. And they said, yes, and they took shahada. So you see, this is a gift for me. This makes me happy. Allah gave me a gift of being able to talk to these five people, and they said shahada. It's a big reward of which we can't even imagine how high the reward is for them. And it comes... You don't expect it. Everybody wants to say, I'm going here, I'm talking to this person about this, and inshallah he will become Muslim. But what happens when it just hits you in the face like this? Somebody comes up and says, I want to know about Islam. Are you going to be ready to converse with that person? Are you going to know how to start? Well, we're hoping in this class that you can learn how to start, how to go to the middle, when to go on, how to finish, and what to say in the end, and how to be successful. These are things that you should learn from this class. It is from Allah's grace upon us in these times that there are many ways to give dialogue. There's no such thing as one way. The one thing that everybody should understand from this class is I keep getting asked the same question over and over again. What is the secret to making dialogue? And finally the students have figured out that the secret is that there's no secret. <laughs> you have to do it the right way every time then you will be successful, mashallah. One who calls to Islam is obliged to choose the most suitable way for those whom he or she calls. Each situation is a different set of rules, depending if you're going to talk to male nurses, female nurses, mechanics, if you're going to talk to people who are janitors. If you talk to people whose janitors, you certainly won't talk about all the chemicals it takes to fly a rocket. It wouldn't make any sense. They don't know what you're talking about. They don't have a basis. They don't feel safe and secure with you. They don't 
really understand what you're talking about. So each time it changes. Yes, the basic conversation has to be about Tohi. It always has to start with Tohi, monotheism, the belief in one God. But how you get there is where the change is. You have to talk to each person different, and you don't just run in and say, do you believe in one God? That's the end of it there. He's probably going to say yes and walk away. So it's how you get there is what the difference is. That's where the secret is, knowing how to talk to a person. And by just doing a simple three, four, five minute introduction. So I don't know anything else to call it. Introduce yourself and let him introduce himself to you and find out general information about him. Responsibility of the caller is to be aware of the various forms of invocation in order to facilitate his work. You have to think of it as work. It's fun work. Uh, it's enjoyable. It's very tiring. I know after me, for me, every time I finish making dialogue, I feel like I've run a marathon. I'm just tired and because you're giving everything into it. The caller should also redirect or direct his invitation to everyone, including his immediate family, relatives, servants, guests, neighbors, colleagues, and his friends, everybody around you. He should also be aware of the various locations where the invocation can be given, like mosques. The, a lot of the people who are non-Muslims are under the impression they're not allowed to go into a mosque or be anywhere around the mosque. This is a good way of opening the conversation after you've introduced yourself and introduced him. You can say, oh, would you like to see the mosque? And he probably will say, I'm not allowed. He says, no, no, you are allowed to come. Come, I will show you. Take your shoes off. Make sure you're clean. This is where we pray. This is the carpet. This is where the imam stands. This, they are allowed. We should allow them to go and we should tell them what we do. He should also be aware of the various locations where the invocation can be given, like mosque prayer halls, schools, hospitals, prisons, parks, beaches, and recreational areas. Hodge tents, hotels, residence airports, bus stations, banquet halls, shopping centers, marketplaces, just about anywhere. Places where newcomers to the country frequent, such as passport offices, duty-free shopping areas, immigration offices, many places where non-Muslims come. Cooperation in Daiwa is also important as there are many others striving to give the invitation whose skill and experience may benefit you and yours may benefit them. Learning from their expenses will help you to be more creative and upgrade your knowledgeable and Daiwa skills. So don't be afraid to listen to somebody else who's giving Daiwa. You can learn something, maybe he will ask you if there's something he should have said and he has a chance to learn something too. Consequently, the caller should eagerly Encourage others to collaborate with others in Daiwa and to give their utmost in serving the religion, whether they are from this family or not. Furthermore, he or she should utilize a variety of Daiwa materials and advertisements to recruit others to his noble cause by jointly printing books. That's where you and your friends get together. Maybe you know enough to make two pages. Okay. Maybe your friend knows enough to make two pages. And if you have enough friends, pretty soon you have a hundred pages. You can all put it together, call it in, uh, some kind of co-op or something. This was made by certain, certain co-op. And you can print everybody's name if you want to. The importance is, is the book and what it concerns and help, help other people to become Muslim. Some clans classes get together and make their own books. There's many ways to do it. You can make CDs, videotapes, and distribute them as widely as possible with, in his or her circle, of friends and well as the outside of the circle. You can also take these CDs and books and stuff to places where non-Muslims frequent. Shopping malls especially, uh, fast food places, some of these parks around here. There's many places that you could uh, distribute material. Sometimes just handing somebody a book starts a conversation by itself. You should have your own little dialogue corner in your house or at work. I have one at work and I have one that I've put together to put into the dining hall of where the non-Muslims go to eat. I have put together a book stand and keep books in there. I have one in my office in the hallway to where if they want to take a book they don't see me so they don't feel self-conscious about it. And also in my house I have a place where I keep books so if somebody comes to my house I can give them a book. And sometimes uh, other Muslims come to my house and they say 
we don't have any books, do you have books I can give to so and so? So by you giving this Muslim a book and he taking it and giving it to a non-Muslim, you see you're still getting the same reward, it doesn't make any difference. It's all based on intention anyway. So you should have your own little places. At home have household library, prepare a collection of books, magazines and tapes according to what is suitable for the various age groups. Whoever you're going to give the books to, don't give adult books to children and the other way around, vice versa. Also, don't, I have a rule for myself, I don't know about anybody else, but I think it's a good rule. I don't give a book to somebody that I haven't read yet. Chances are, he's going to ask you a question about that book, and then you're going to say, I don't know what you're talking about because I haven't read it. And then you really look stupid. Now he knows more about Islam than you do. So don't give away books that you don't know what's inside. Look at the books first and then give it to him. And it's a good habit or idea to go back a couple of weeks later and ask him about the book you gave him. You will know if he read it or he didn't read it. You'll know if he understood it or didn't understand it. And maybe you'll remind him to ask you a question that he wanted to ask you from before. So this is a good idea. Posters are good to leave posters around, but try not to leave offensive material. Some people are offended by some things we say. So don't make offensive material. Family lessons. Teach your children uh, and your wife and your, whoever's in the house. Teach them how to make Daiwa. Tell them things about Daiwa. Tell them Daiwa stories. Get them excited about wanting to make Daiwa. Have little font family competitions. If you have kids, you can have them to design the posters. Sometimes kids make these nice little posters. Give them competitions of things to do. Family magazine. Create a family magazine by having family members participate with writing essays or cutting articles and pictures related to Islam from the magazines and newspapers from which you bring home. Always try to have something laying around for somebody to read. I used to collect Al Juma magazine, but I have taken them all to my home in the Philippines, so I don't have them here. But an Al Juma magazine will help you and help anybody who comes into your house. Even a non-Muslim sometimes will pick them up and look at them trying to decide what it's about. And it's a good way to start a conversation. Participate in Islamic social work. That's where uh, maybe if the village gets together and they give out rice or something, then participate in this. You don't have to necessarily donate rice, but you can be there to help to give, such as the Daiwa Center is giving out dates now. You're not giving out the dates, but you can be there and help to hand out the dates and participation in this. Righteous acts in public. Do some righteous acts in front of the family, such as prayer, reading Quran, and giving charity, an example for them to learn from. But don't just do it in front of them. Do it when they're not seeing you also. At the mosque, participate in the wall magazine. In most mosques, there are bulletin boards, at the back with announcements and Islamic posters, such as this one here has books. We have different kind of books. Uh, we have a bulletin board. Shaquille, can you show the bulletin board? We're talking about the bulletin board and the kind of things they should have for Daiwa. Just turn the camera around and show them the See, we have a wall of just books, bookshelves, and these are free books for non-Muslims and Muslims also for, in different languages. And then we also have a bulletin board in the middle of the room with people who have become Muslim, what's going on in different places. These are the kind of things that you should participate in. If your mosque doesn't have, or if the place where you work doesn't have, you should participate together and develop the mosque facilities and programs. Participate in developing the mosque dialogue facilities and activities such as its library, Quran memorization classes, and its contribution box. Providing books and tapes. Books and tapes are not very expensive, and we can find them fairly cheap. You, if you don't have money for a lot, then your, a group of you guys can get together and buy. And then, if you want, you can hand them out together, or one person can hand them out. Advertise for mosque programs such as dinners. Today I think the uh, Daiwa Center 
is having something to do with the Christians. I don't remember the name of it, but it's where the Christians and the Muslims are getting together in cooperation and having some kind of a fun day or uh, dinner for Filipinos. It's the first one, so inshallah it will go well. Lectures, have lectures, but remember lectures are very boring for people. So if you just go and stand up there for an hour and just beat, 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 the people will be asleep and they, nobody likes lectures. If it's about a subject they want to hear or hear, then they will stay for it. But if it's not, you've got to think about the whole audience. Try to keep it uh, simple. The Prophet Muhammad says, keep your speeches short and your prayers long. So 15 minutes is good for a lecture. And that way, somebody who doesn't really want to hear it, he's not feeling uh, tired and let out and he doesn't have to worry about it. Translation of the Friday Kutbah. If you go to a mosque and you hear a good Juma Kutbah, try to translate it into English or, or Tagalog or whatever so that you can give it later at a later time. And even so you can give these to non-Muslims. So try to translate them into other languages for people. Mosque committees. Participate in the mosque committee, which organizes the mosque diver program and its social activities. At school, morning assembly. Help to prepare dial oriented material for the morning assembly and schools performing morning, morning broadcast. I believe this is a Muslim school. I don't think it would work very well in Christian schools. Bulletin boards, as we showed you, you can show current events and what's going on in the Islamic community. Drama activities, there's no reason we can't be involved in drama. We can still do plays and we can still, as long as they all fit within the guidelines of, of Islam, there's nothing wrong with it. Arrange for the visits of various speakers who could come and lecture. And callers to the school focused on open forums in which students are able to ask the questions which are most important to them, thereby making Islam seem more relevant. Probably about ten times I've been asked to go to schools here in Saudi Arabia. First of all, the Saudi children are amazed to find that there are other Muslims but they, that are not Saudis. Um, so they want to hear. If you say, like, I'm an American, they, they want to hear, oh, what's your country like? What do you think about Islam? They're surprised to hear that it's not any different for me than it is for them. I do the same five prayers every day. I still pray the same Allah. So be prepared to go and give a lecture at a school or something to encourage the children to do that. Have exhibitions and expositions. We've had here at least once a year we have the expose where we go and we take all the books from the Dawah Center and people come and we sell books, we give some away. Be prepared to do like this. Islamic Week. Request the school dedicate a week to annually to Islamic exhibitions, displays, posters, artifacts, videos, books and tapes. Summer holidays introduce Islamic content in the summer vacation activities of the school. At the workplace, Daiwa posters. Put up Daiwa posters with announcements for Islamic events on the office and bulletin boards. Uh, if you have a Quran class, put it on the bulletin board. Uh, one of the things that we have found that's good for non-Muslims is an Arabic speaking, speaking class. Teach people how to speak Arabic. And you can say the class is for non-Muslims or new Muslims. Uh, it has nothing to do with Islam. It's only teaching you how to learn how to speak Arabic. And if you want to, you can include reading and writing because some people want to learn a foreign language. This is another good program. Keep dialogue material on your desk at all times. I have two or three Qurans, different translations of the meaning, on my desk. So if anybody comes and wants to look at it or wants to take it, then I can let them have it. And I have another one that I can put back up there. Uh, don't be afraid to keep some small books, not big books. I'm not talking about keep a whole al Bukhari section. I'm just talking about small books about dialogue. People used to use a lot of tapes, especially here, but now we don't use much tapes anymore. There's no audio tapes. I guess you could give out CDs or DVDs with Islamic information on them. Invitations, call interested co-workers to lectures and other Islamic events, as well as to visit Islamic dialogue offices. Uh, we try to encourage the non-Muslims to go with us, we go to the beach, we go fishing, we go scuba diving, boating, whatever fun things we do, we like to take the non-Muslims with us so they can see that Islam is not all just pray and fast and we're not crazy. Mashallah, we just 
We're just like everybody else. To try, try and take them to these things to show. They like things called cultural days. Um, even we made a mock wedding one time and took a whole busload of women to a place where they went to a mock wedding and they really enjoyed it too much. And that's been at least six years now now and the women still ask, when are we going to do it again? When are we going to do it again? They enjoy it a lot. Congregational prayer, establish congregational prayer in the office or invite co-workers to accompany you to the nearby mosque. Islamic socialization, social gatherings and invite Islamic propagators to join you as informal guests. Sometimes you can ask a person who's making dawah to come with you, but don't say he's coming to make a speech. If he wants to talk or if he wants to make a speech, let him do what he wants. But don't tell the people you're bringing that he's coming to make a speech to you because they won't show up, they, they will go the other way. Open discussions, encourage Islamic discussions during lunch and tea breaks. Islamic projects, gather other active Muslims in the office to initiate Islamic charitable projects on your job. Is Islamic example, do your job to the best of your ability. At all times is a good Islamic example to your co-workers. We always say that the Muslims try to do 110%. Yes, the non-Muslims try to do 100% and sometimes lower, but for Muslims, we should always try to do 110%. We should always be better than the non-Muslims at our work. Next topic is called the general means of Daiwa. It talks about Daiwa posters. Create or purchase a variety of beautiful eye-catching posters whose scenes match thought-provoking Islamic texts or suitable Daiwa situations and put them in appropriate locations around the city or in your shop. Muslim greeting cards, print and distri distribute, congratulatory cards, Eid cards, as well as cards commemorating other Isla occasions of Islamic significance, which contain beneficial dialogue messages and slogans. Some of these things are good uh, introductions. You can, they will ask questions about them. Well, for instance, if you say, Happy Eid, they're probably going to ask you, what does the word Eid mean? Of course, we know it means feast, but they don't know that. They don't know what the, e, the word Eid means. Have a Daiwa album, collects all inspiring pictures and powerful Daiwa slogans in Daiwa albums, which may be kept for visitors or guests, or given as a gift. We like to take the... Uh, we get the, the new Muslims to write out a small paper, you know, what you think about Islam, why you became a Muslim, how you became a Muslim, and collect these in a book and we like to let non-Muslims read these. They uh, Sometimes they feel like they associate with this person. Well, he, he was like me before, so if I let them read this, then I'm not really preaching to them or not trying to get them to become Muslim. I'm just showing there was other people who were non-Muslim also who became Muslim. Marriage invitation cards, even though they don't know what they're doing, they would like to go to your wedding. Um, at least they can say when they've gone back to their country, oh, I went to a Muslim wedding, or I went to a Saudi wedding, or I went to a Filipino wedding. Because it's something of your culture they can take back with them, so they, they can associate with you and they know what they were talking about. Request a person you wish to invite to Islam to revise or type out a Daiwa article as a means of indirectly exposing them to the Islamic information. For instance, if you are a, an Arab, and your native language is Arabic, of course, but you've written a paper in English, you can ask a non-Muslim to edit it for you. Say, please, my English is not good and I have written this and I know your English is good. Could you please read this for me and make any changes, that, any words that are wrong or, or any English that is wrong? It doesn't make any difference if there's anything wrong or not. You just want the person to read it. It's a way of getting to read something without him realizing that he's reading something about Islam. The internet is a, really a big boom now, as we are using here. This is the internet. Uh, everywhere you can look, you can find something about Islam on the internet. Just about any question you could have, you could go on the internet and find the answer if you wanted to. Uh, we should use this to our advantage. Media such as television participate in spreading the dialogue by developing and presenting audio and TV programs. They use audio in the uh, Philippines, they have a radio station. It's only for two hours once a week. They have a big following, a lot of people listen to this. 
It's, we don't have it here, but in other countries they do have and they do use it. Uh, they have some talk shows in America, like the Dean Show, uh, Yusuf Estes has some shows, there's some other shows, such as Huda, Peace TV, there are many shows, and these media programs can do a lot. Stickers, you can get stickers for people to put on their cars, we have a lot of those. Schedules, post schedules by the prayer timings and Ramadan fasting timings on bulletin boards, because most of the non-Muslims don't know when prayer time is, and they would like to know. They feel embarrassed when they go downtown to shopping and as soon as they walk in the door they say, oh, it's prayer time and they got to run back out. They don't know what to do with themselves. They stand outside. They, if they knew what time prayer time was, they wouldn't go down there. So try to post the prayer times. Diaries and agendas. Publish or print diaries or agendas and educational schedules containing dire reminders as well as significant Islamic dates and occasions. We have a lot of uh, Islamic dates on the calendar many people don't know about. Uh, this battle was fought on this date. You could probably print this up in English. I know it's on the back of the prayer calendars. On the back of the page it has a little advice or what happened in history on this date. Maybe you could take those and print those in English so that the people would know something about Islam. Calling cards. You could use calling cards. We don't use much of them anymore now that everybody has uh, mobile phones, you can keep most everybody's name and number inside the phone. Before, when we were using landlines, we needed a lot of business cards or calling cards. But you can have them made up if you wanted. You can distribute them to people and maybe they will accept these. Postcards are small cards, but we don't use those much anymore either because with the internet and uh, email, hardly nobody uses mail anymore. So this is an old idea. A dial briefcase, you can have a briefcase and you can make it up with what the information you need and keep it in your car all the time or at your office. As I said, mag magazine descriptions, uh, uh, prescriptions such as uh, Juma magazine, that's the one in English. There, I know there's many others, but this is the only one I can think of. Collect used magazines and books. Start a project to collect used magazines and books, Islamic books, decided from homes and institutions in order to ship them or distribute them where they are needed. Here we have, on this channel that you're watching this on, we have uh, people can send an email and get five free books about Islam. This is good if you could do something like this. Leaflets and flyers. Sometimes we do this if we have uh, something big like the eat dinner or something. We put out leaflets or pamphlets showing who, what, when, where, why, how, what it's about so people can come and enjoy. Islamic slogans, Kashley Islamic slogans are, can be printed on calendars and agendas. There's a lot of things we can do here for calendars. We print a calendar every year. You can put a lot of information on a calendar. But there's no reason that you couldn't print a calendar also. It doesn't have to be uh, a multi-million dollar organization to print a calendar. I print them on my computer and give them out sometimes to people. At work we didn't have no calendars one year because the company for some reason couldn't afford it or something. So I printed them out myself and I put little Islamic slogans on there and gave them out. All the non-Muslims took them and they had them on their desk for a whole year. So every day when they looked to see what today was, they were seeing these slogans or short words about Islam. You could do this yourself at your work, school, wherever you are, you can do this. Public competitions, open letters, general publications, such as tapes, CDs, DVDs, all these things you can leave around and pass out to people. We're trying, per, ter, trying to right now put together one with the, the Dean Show. We're going to put a collection of the Dean Show on a CD and pass out to the people here locally, the non-Muslims, where if they don't want to talk to you, they can at least take the DVD at home and watch it. Distribution of dialogue materials, we do a lot of distribution here, and you could do some yourself. Large billboards, I haven't seen very large billboards, it's the signs on the highway. But you could do this if you could afford it. Sponsor sporting events, such as the Daiwa Center here has a basketball team. The Filipinos wanted to play basketball, so we sponsored them. We put the Daiwa Center logo on the back of the jackets, and they go and play basketball Friday afternoons or Friday morning before Juma. At least you can get your, your logo, you can get people to see it. Uh, we tried to send one of the Hadaiis with them so that because a lot of the other teams are non-Muslim, at least they have a chance to talk. And me personally, I have gone to the 
of the Dallas Center and gave a speech during the halftime where the guys were listening. Charity clinic, sporting events, women's courses like write down articles or slogans. Women have a lot to commit or contribute to the Dial program if you elect them. Uh, they don't like to go out in public too much, some of them don't, but they can write articles, they can write books. Uh, they can be just as active as we are. Charity bazaars, charity luncheons, uh, you can invite people to lunch, talk about Islam, award functions, recognize somebody for something they did. Even though you're a Muslim and he's a non-Muslim, maybe he did something. Uh, if he saved somebody's life or did something for somebody, you should recognize him. And this is a good way of making Daiwa. Daiwa websites such as islamunveiled.org is our website. And if you have enough information, you can open your own. Break fast with your friends, and even break fast with the non-Muslims. When you break fast, there's no reason, no reason that they couldn't come and sit with you and enjoy your meal. You get the same reward either way. Maybe you'll get more reward because you're making dawa. I know I used to be invited all the time when I was a non-Muslim to come and break fast with people. And I enjoyed it. It was okay. A meal is a meal. You know, a free meal is a free meal. Uh, the non-Muslim doesn't care, but you have to add a little bit to it. You have to give him a little indirect dawa. Uh, don't, don't embarrass him. Don't point your fingers at him. Don't say, make sure that people are nice to him. And it, it'll work out fine. Provide transportation for those people who don't have rides. I know you see in the souk and other places here, non-Muslims standing on the side of the street waiting for a ride. That's an excellent opportunity. Usually whoever's picking them up is, is doing it for money. You can pick them up, you can give them a book, don't charge them any money. This is excellent now. It's a good chance. Make supplications. Don't forget this. Make supplications for yourself. But please, Allah, give me the information you want this man to hear or this woman to hear. Don't, don't want to give your own words. Give the words that Allah wants you to give. Personal visits. Sometimes uh, if you see one of your co-workers is sick or something, go and visit him. Even if he's non-Muslim, you should go and visit him. Just to make him feel better. Uh, I had a friend who his insulin went up over 1,000. He's a non-Muslim, but he's a friend of mine, mashallah. When he went into the hospital, I made sure that me and my wife went to visit him. And my wife gave him a short speech, and she wasn't the time for it, but she did. Uh, but she was concerned for his health and afraid he was going to die before he had a chance to become a Muslim. And so, these are good chances. Make sure that non-Muslims see decoration of faith. When, when somebody else becomes Muslim, do it in front of the other non-Muslims. Show them that there's nothing to be afraid of. Nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody's going to do anything to you. You could put materials on public transportation, such as buses, taxis, other things. If, if anybody's a taxi driver, this is a good chance. If you have back, uh, a bag with um, books and, and small things inside it, or just playing the Quran on your radio. And there's many things, many ways you can do it. Daiwa booths at certain places. We could set up Daiwa booths. We could put uh, books and tapes and things to give away and books for other people to buy. Telephone Daiwa. You can call people and make Daiwa on telephone. Even now you can use uh, Skype. It's almost free. Uh, Yahoo Messenger. There's many ways you could use. Arabic language courses. I already talked about offering free language courses. They like to come to those a lot. Or just Islamic courses. Some people, some people don't want to become Muslim, but they want to know about Islam. So just offer free Islamic courses. This is how we pray. This is why we pray. This is the times. This is why. There's a lot of things they would like to know. Have a Daiwa day. It's a day where you just make Daiwa for lots of people. Alhamdulillah. We finished all 80. I didn't think we were going to make it, but we finished all 80. Now's the time for questions. It's 10 minutes till, so do you have any questions today or? Yes. My questions uh, are there uh, any websites specialists in uh, Dawa or for this is for, for uh, new Muslims? Trusted websites? 
You need to receive information or to talk to somebody. To, to send it as a, li a link uh, during email or uh, to show... The one that I have found with the best books, and they have books for new Muslims, they have books for non-Muslims, and they have books for old Muslims. And they have, I believe it's in 88 languages, I believe. Just about any language on earth is there. It's called islamhouse.org. It has every language that I've known of. There's books in Tagalog, in English, and even in Arabic they have books. It's a very good website, islamichouse.org. And I have not found any mistakes in there. Even they have a book that I wrote a long time ago, they have a book from me in there. So, they didn't ask my permission or anything, but that's okay, and I didn't mind. So they have good books. Any other questions? Okay, well if there's no more questions, Shaquille, you have any questions? No. Okay, thank you for coming. See you next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.